this video, I build a huge working gondola station. I also add 10 cable cars as well as a control room to the power station. Oh, and I supercharge my DeLorean, making it do something crazy when it hits full speed. Let's create wood. I've got quite a lot of it. All thanks to this amazing tiny weeny little tree farm. But I don't have many different varieties. And there's a whole bunch of different varieties of wood in this mod pack. And some of them I've never even seen before. So I'd like a bigger wood farm. In fact, I would like a really big wood farm. And this area that we're building in just doesn't have the room for it. But if we hop ourselves over this little mountain here very quickly... Over on the other side, you'll see we have a nice big area. And I thought this would be the perfect area for a big old logging camp that produces all of the different types of wood. What are they? What's this? Raccoon tails? Oh no, what happened to these raccoons? And then transports all of that wood back over the mountain. That's right, I said over the mountain. But instead of using trains to transport it, like the bunch of trains that we've got here now, I want to use monorails. Monorails are part of the steam and rails create add-on, and they enable you to create some really interesting types of trains. Kind of like these ones, which I've stolen off the internet. These cable cars, otherwise known as gone gondolas, depending on where you go, come from these cable car stations. And they have just one track which loops round and it has a little station where the passengers get on and then they come out of the other end, go over the mountain or up the mountain in these cases, and then they come back down again. And that's exactly what I want to build here. But that means building two cable car or gondola stations, a big old monorail across the mountain, and a ginormous wood farm as well, which is an absolutely ridiculous amount of work to do in one episode. So this episode's probably going to be a two-parter. And as much as I'd like to get started immediately working on it all, I've got some work to do over at our power station. You see, in the rush to get it finished at the end of our last episode, well, I didn't really do a great deal in terms of decoration, and I haven't done anything with the control room, and as I mentioned in the last episode, I've got a whole bunch of plans for this area. So let's get cracking. Let's create. Yeah, let's, let's create. That's what I was going to say. So if I'm going to be making a big display board, I'm going to need a whole bunch of electron tubes, and I'm going to need a whole bunch of display links as well. So I've got 15 electron electron tubes, which means I can make 30 display boards. And that's all of those gone now. Oh, geez. And I can make 10 display links. I don't think I need 10. Let's just grab five, six, apparently, for now. I'd very much like a clipboard as well, but I need paper, which is all the way back at Hill Valley. And I'm going to need a bunch of threshold switches, which also requires electron tubes. Oh, geez. I can make rose quartz easy enough, but I'm going to have to drive all the way back to Hill Valley to get sandpaper and paper. It'd be so nice if I could get this to go faster. What? Run out of track? How has it run out of the tracks just there? Huh. Well, that's interesting. Oh, it doesn't... What? It doesn't reach? How does it not it, it reach? Oh, it reaches to this one. Right, okay. Oh, 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 oops. Oh, dear. There we go. Fixed. We're back on the road. Now, this DeLorean's pretty slow, but in Create, you can make powered trains. However, I've no idea how that works. So I'm going to guess. So I'm thinking if I get rid of that block there and throw in a barrel there instead and fill that full of coal, and then I find somewhere to squeeze in a furnace, which I could probably do at the front here, just like that. Disguise that with the display link so you can't really tell. Fix my little window problem by actually having tinted glass blocks in here instead of frame blocks. And then hopefully my floorboards won't disappear when Whenever I disassemble the thing. Now, I don't know if that's going to work or not, but if I put another floorboard on top of that barrel, although well, that's going to make it very difficult to access, I can disguise that barrel as well. Oh, however, if I use a trapdoor instead of a floorboard, then I can access the barrel to refill it with coal. Now, like I said, I have absolutely no idea if this is what you're supposed to do, but I'm just assuming. So if I assemble the train now, it should hopefully be powered. Can I, I can still flip that up. I can still get into the barrel, but when I disassemble it, do I lose my floor? I still lose my floorboards. Why? I don't understand. You cost me so much money with iron every time I rebuild you. Okay, let's see if it's any faster now. I can't tell if it is. I think it might be. I think it might be faster, but I'm not 100% sure. But has it used any coal? It has. It's used a piece of coal. It worked. But now I'm back up here again and I really need to be back down there. Right. Anyway, sandpaper. Well, let's make a bunch of normal paper too. And then take some sand in case we need some more sandpaper. Just sanding my quartz while I'm driving. What could possibly go wrong? This is genius. Why doesn't anyone do this while they're driving? Oh. oh. <laughs> Sorry, little driver. I appear to be inside your train with my old oh, jays. Um. Oh no. 
<laughs> oh, this is a disaster. Don't sand rose quartz and drive, peeps. It's bad for your health. <laughs> How far in did I get? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Oops. Here we go. Well, the good news is everybody survived and my rose quartz is all polished now. Fantastic. Right, what was I building? Ah, yes. Threshold switches, which I need comparators. I've only got five iron sheets left. Right, well, instead of going all the way back to Hill Valley again, I'm going to actually start using this basement. Because we're creating an incredible amount of power over there, I might as well actually use some. And I can very, very easily route the power from there underground and over to the hotel. But I don't want to do that. I want to have power lines. Now, there is a create add-on that actually allows you to have electricity and power lines properly and things like that. And I have thought about adding it to this world, but I think I'm going to leave things as they are for at least this phase. So I'm going to have to use posts and shafts for now to create our power lines. So excusing the decoration for a minute, just so I can show you how this is going to look, this is my idea for a power line. Basically, some thin posts on top of a thick post with these bits at the top here. Then the idea was to put some brackets on like that, but that's going to look really weird if I do it this way. So I don't think that's going to work. I think just posts all the way down will work absolutely fine. At the top, we've got a couple of trap doors. We've got a couple of these brackets, and then we can have shafts running through those like that all the way to wherever we want it. The only problem with this is it's not going to work on diagonals and it's definitely not going to work on bends very well. I have to be very careful with how we plan this out. Now we could probably do with some sort of little transformer station at this point to actually bring the shafts across. But let's just assume we've got one of those here. Then this power line would actually have to have gearboxes on there a little bit like that to distribute the power properly until the next bit. And it doesn't look totally awful. It doesn't look all that great either. Now, the power's actually coming from that point there. So this is our power. And I think at this point here for now, we'll just have a couple of girders coming out of there, just making it look a little bit less like it's just floating there doing nothing. Although I do feel like that could be better. So after back and forth in and changing my mind a bunch of times, I've come up with this, which I kind of like. We've got now two outputs coming from our power station, and each one of these is going into the same sort of set of posts. And each post has four gearbox on it, so the power can go in any direction, any way we want. Now, I could have all of this with single lines. They don't need two lines, but I just think they look more like power lines. Well, in fact, they look more like telephone lines, but they look more interesting with two. And I've tried my best to chunk align these things so that they stay in the corner of these chunks. So each two chunks, we've got another one. And down here, we've got another one in two chunks time. And then when we actually want to connect something to this, like a building or something like that, we can have a post like this, which then takes that power down into the ground. And then we can feed that underground into the house, like it kind of would be in real life. And I think it looks fine. I've no idea whether this is going to get in the way of any buildings and things we're going to build, but I kind of like it. It just adds a little bit more interest and a little bit more life and a little bit more realism to the world. If you've got any ideas for how we can make all of this look a little bit better, then please feel free to share your ideas in the comments. But for now, I'm happy with this. And that means that we can get power in here. I've just got to do a little bit of digging. And just like that, we've got power. Let's block up that hole, put a case in on there so you can't see it. And now we've got power to the house, all the way from the power station. Amazing. And with very little effort at all, I've set up a few basic machines that are all running at full speed thanks to our amazing power station. And we've got a little stress meter here showing us how much remaining capacity we've got. That means I can now make myself a little whisk. And with that whisk, I can mix up a bunch of andesite alloy. Oh, and I don't even need the blaze burner for that, so that's good. So now I've got plenty of iron sheets and andesite alloy. I can craft up a bunch of these electron tubes and finally craft up a bunch of these threshold switches. So first things first, we're going to need a big old display board, and I'm hoping I've got enough things here. Let's start in this corner, build it across, and see what we end up with. So we're going to take power in from down there into here. And that's going to power our display board. And then I can do things like this. I can add a threshold switch onto that, so then I get one of these display links i believe i link it to that i'm not 100 percent sure and then i think i just stick it on here and that should big data advancement there we go shows us we've got 86 percent worth of lava in that tank and now i can write in here so i can put on buffer lava and that should then show buffer lava 86 percent fantastic Let's get another one of these. So this is what I've got so far. We've got lava, buffer lava, 89%. Then we've got power. Total power available, used power, and then the available power to us. I really wanted to see how much lava we'd actually got over at the hot springs as well. 
but the range is a bit too far and whilst you can change that in the config menus i don't want to cause too much lag on this thing and the other problem with that is because all of these tanks are split up it would mean i'd have to have loads and loads of lines on that display board in order to fit all of that information on because i don't know if there's any way you could add them together so we're not going to worry about that while we've got lava down here that's all we need to worry about so now that we've got a whole bunch of things going onto our display board which i've now wrapped in all of this casing just to make it look a little bit more interesting and i've moved the stairs over by a block as well so they actually don't clash with it i've got a whole bunch of redstone links and some clutches and the reason for this is I want to be able to turn off the power to our power grid and I also want to be able to turn off the power to the actual production. I just think it'd be fun to be able to do that in our little control room. So if I get rid of that and that and put a clutch in there and a clutch in there, put a couple of redstone links on those, set them to receive mode, redstone torch shaft, shaft redstone torch, power in, power out type thing. That makes sense. Throw a clutch on here with the redstone link on it. Again in receive mode and put a couple of lava buckets on that and then that's our lava going in or... Should we use some more shaft and have lava going in that way? Kind of makes sense. And I don't really think it's going to be possible to turn these boilers off. And if I do, it's going to be a nightmare. So I'm not going to fiddle with those. Well, I've been a busy bee decorating this control room. I haven't done anything downstairs at all yet. But what I've got up here is quite interesting. I've used the immersive paintings mod to actually give us this little security camera section. So you can see we've got a view of the lake, the train coming in. We've got the hot springs. We've got me in the control room. We've got a view of the storage area downstairs and even the boiler room. Now, these are paintings. They don't actually move. But I think it looks pretty cool. We've got these buttons here that do absolutely nothing at all. And we've got these wheels here that do nothing at all as well. But we've got now access to be able to turn off our power lines. So if we look out there, we can see that one spinning. If I turn that one off, there we go, it's stopped. So that's fantastic that we can turn our power off. And over here on this side, we've got the switches for our lava coming in, which is this one here. So I can turn that off if I want to. And I've got one for lava going out. Not that we've got any lava going out. On the little control room desk, we've got a couple of computers. These also have screens that are using the immersive paintings to make it look like they're looking outside. And this one's looking in the workshop. They've got a little analog lever each that you can use. A little mouse and keyboard and a little coffee pot as well. And over in the corner, there's a very, very very little cabinet set up where they can make coffees and things like that and downstairs i'm just going to finish off doing these tables and then fill this place full of barrels probably because that makes most sense well i've tried not to go too crazy in here i've added a bunch of stuff so we've got some shelves over here with some barrels on some switches that do absolutely nothing at all other than ruin the trap doors above them we've got these little tables some cabinets some red barrels we've got a grate around our lava to protect ourselves from getting burnt on there and a little bit of uh, protection around this big lava tank on the inside as well i've added a bunch of barrels under there in this little gantry mezzanine platform here with some more barrels on top a ladder to get up there a big sort of tank weird thing here and in the little office here we've got carpeted floor we've got a little reception area and then outside i haven't really done a great deal i've thrown down a couple more barrels here and i've added this gantry around the side of the building which basically gives us an access point to these redstone links here and then around here where our train is all i've done is thrown down a few more stone snow blocks and snow layers just to try and blend that in a little bit more make it feel a little bit more snowy i've done absolutely nothing with the tunnel yet but with all of these changes and little tweaks and things here and there i think it really does feel like a nice little sort of power station -y factory thing right anyway that's enough of decorating this place this is not helping me build a gondola station is it oh geez so i've got to squeeze a gondola station in down here with a big chairlift thing going all the way over there how hard could it be what could possibly go wrong i think it's time for a montage Wait! Before we do a montage, I've just realised I need to do a whole bunch of crafting. And I need a whole bunch of machines to set this up for us. The monorail, I assumed, would be as easy as track, but it's not. I need a whole bunch of metal girders, and then I need a whole bunch of metal brackets, and a whole bunch of iron sheets in order to make just a few monorail tracks. So first things first, I've built an andesite alloy processing plant, which is taking andesite from this barrel, and then it's taking iron nuggets from here, mixing them in there, and they're going into this barrel here. The next contraption is an iron sheet making machine which takes iron ingots from this barrel puts them onto this press and then all i need is a bit of power in order to get those out of there and to get that i can put one of those there and one of those there and now we're getting a barrel full of iron sheets i could set up an auto crafting system to make these metal brackets but to be perfectly honest with you there's no need i can just craft them by hand it's going to be a much easier process but i am going to semi automate the production of our actual monorail i need girders in here they're going to come across onto this belt then in this first barrel i'm going to need the metal brackets then in this one i'm going to need the iron sheets and then hopefully we should end up with monorail in this barrel here so i need to grab a bunch of 
that andesite and we've got an absolute ton of it now craft up a whole bunch of girders and chuck them in there grab a ton of these iron sheets and throw them in there grab a bunch of iron ingots iron nuggets and andesite alloy craft up a whole bunch of brackets and throw all of those into there and assuming i've done everything right we should now be producing monorail we are i've got a bit of iron sheet in there by mistake but we are producing them very quickly i think i might have overdone it a little bit we've still got a whole bunch of sheet and a whole bunch of brackets to go through we've already nearly got a barrel full apparently you get a lot more for this than i thought you would now the first question is where am i actually going to build this thing i want to build it here but i don't want to block the view of our hot springs i don't want to affect this little path and i don't want the monorail to be too steep coming up here ideally this building would be on a diagonal here and the monorails would go Go out in that direction straight over there but thanks to minecraft being minecraft that's not really going to work out for us so i need to either have it facing that way or that way and i think if we had it here we could face that way and go over and then curve round. I think that makes most sense. So I think this area here will be perfect. So I guess there's nothing for it but to chop down all of these trees. Montage, begin! I started by removing the trees around the area, flattening down the terrain, dealing with pillager patrols and then pushing into the mountain's edge. I needed the area to be big due to the large turning circle of the monorails and I wanted the entire loop to fit inside the building just like a real life gondola station does. Once I was happy with the size, I started working on the turning circle, building up girders and placing monorails so I could get an idea of the height that everything would need to be at. With the starter rail in place, I built up a circular platform with girders that fit inside the monorail circle and proceeded to build the first cable car to make sure everything would fit. This meant placing the station on the monorail, adding a train casing to create the bogey and then designing the cable car using a similar thing to the other trains in the area. Of course, it was built mainly out of frame blocks and then textured with industrial iron, red concrete and glass panels. Inside, I added a portable storage interface, a couple of barrels, train controls and a seat so it would be able to carry plenty of items and work with the conductor as an automated train in the future. Finishing off with a couple of sliding doors, I glued it all together, assembled it via the station and then drove it down and around the turning circle to make sure everything fit together okay. Now that I knew what height the floor inside the station needed to be, I started building it up with industrial iron blocks and iron platforms, creating an area that the passengers could safely walk around with the cable car running between the railings. Then I laid down a floor of andesite slabs directly under the cable car's path with some rail made with glass panes that would act as a guide for the cable car when it was turning around in the station. After a whole lot of tweaking and adjustments, I finally had a decent platform in place which meant I could connect power to the circular girders running at the slowest speed to give the appearance that they were powering the cable cars. Next, it was time to add stairs down to the lower floor which meant digging out a little bit more of the mountain. Similarly to the platform, I built up the ground floor with variations of andesite slabs and then began to build up the framework of the building with chipped dark oak logs. At this point, I realized this was going to be a massive build. I wanted the roof to look similar to the other roofs in the area, sloping gently with snow on top, but to fit the entire monorail mechanism inside meant it had to be pretty high up. I put all of the beams in place, threw in some frame block slopes around the edges and then textured them with the same deep slate variant I'd used on the other builds. I also placed in the internal frame blocks that would be seen from the inside of the building, texturing them with the same texture. Then it was time to create the foundation, which is odd, because I normally do that first. I grabbed my usual variety of tough blocks, placing them randomly up to two blocks away from each of the pillars of the main structure. I wanted the foundation of the main part of the building to be higher, mainly to reduce the massive vertical size of the building's walls, but also to add variation and make it feel more like it was built on the inclined terrain of the mountainside. And with all that foundation in place, I started adding the walled bottom layer, using variations of small andesite bricks before building up the second layer of upside down dark oak stairs, similarly to what I used on the Hot Springs Lava Farm and the power station. But there was way too much dark oak going on to use for the entire side of the taller parts of the station, so I crafted up a bunch of vertical glass panes and filled in the blanks with those, adding in more light to the inside of the station and some much needed texture on the outside. At the front of the station I used andesite bars and the glass panes to close the gap above the monorail, but I didn't really like it too much and I realised the monorail section was missing an important part seen on most of the images I used for inspiration. So I grabbed my frame blocks and started to build the roof of the monorail track using in a variant of tough blocks with grey stained glass to make it feel more complete. And with all that in place, I tweaked the girder framework at the front of the building, fixed up the guide track at the bottom, and then everything was pretty much in place. Which brings us to now. Well, the outer shell is pretty much done. It's absolutely massive, way bigger than I expected, and I haven't done any snow on the roof yet. And the reason it's so big is these monorails don't turn very sharply. It's a little bit like the narrow gauge track we've got underneath, but I like it. It's working, but we do have a couple of problems. The first is that my jetpack is just about out of fuel and so are both of my fuel tanks and so are my reserve fuel tanks so i'm not going to be flying much longer and the other issue is that while i was building that we totally ran out of power we completely depleted all of the lava from here 
and from there. So I had to get Chuck back online and get this thing restarted again so that we can actually get some power back running again. But I do like it. I do think it looks like a gondola station. It's taken a long time trying to get all the detail right. I like the little gondola car, although we're going to need a lot more than one of them. But the other minor issue is this shouldn't have two doors. It should only have one on one side because if you've got a door on this side, you're just going to fall out onto there. I don't really like the fact that it goes at an angle. It would be nice if it had sort of a swing on it, some gravity swing, but I like the fact that it sort of follows this track around the bottom here, very reminiscent of an actual cable car station. And I love the fact that this big wheel at the top is turning almost like it's moving it around. It's totally pointless. I mean, that does absolutely nothing, but it does look good. So the entrance is here, and my plan is we're going to have a little ticket station where you can buy a ticket to ride the gondola, and then you'll go up the stairs and you'll actually get on it. And then down in this section here, we're going to have all of the storage for all of the wood that we're bringing in from our tree farm, which doesn't exist yet. Now, I'm not going to be building another massive gondola station like this over the other side. It'll be a very simple one for two main reasons. The first is this took absolutely forever to build and use tons of resources, and the second is we really don't need it because it's not going to be an area we're really visiting all that often. So I suppose the next thing to do, rather than worrying about the interior here too much, would be to get a whole bunch more tracking and get that over to the other side so we can finish the loop. So I need this track to swoop around from here and go over that bit where it's nice and low, but I do think it needs to probably go up a little bit more on the way. And it's not the easiest thing in the world to place this thing while you're trying to hover and figure out where it can actually reach to because you need blocks to attach it to where you need it to go which is a little bit of random chance. You build up a pillar like this, get some sticky outy bits on it, and then you just see if it will actually attach in any way, shape or form. Then we need to make the other one match up. And I think that looks about right. Yeah, they seem to be going together. That's good. Excellent. So all I need to do now is get this track to connect from here all the way over to here and see if I was in line, which I don't think I was. Let's find out. And it can go there. Okay. Great. And there we go. I now have that track coming all the way from the gondola station all the way down here until that point over there. All right, so now I've got to get it from here down to there, and I feel like this one's too high up, but I can't really tell until I've got one of the little gondola cars here. Let's go. Haven't hit any trees so far. That's good news. Probably going to hit one of those trees. Yep, I hit that tree, so that's going to have to go. Oh, we get all geez. Oh, hitting that hill there. Oh, geez, we're very low. We're a lot lower than I thought we were. Yeah, I might have to do a little bit of terraforming to get rid of that hill but otherwise i think we're okay so yeah we just need to get this thing a little bit lower down now and we're, we're all there one there and one there hop back in here and there we go yeah perfect height by the time we got a little foundation in here and a building around this that's going to be absolutely ideal brilliant i just need to make another one of those loops so it can go all the way round. and now that loop has a few little beams in place to hold it in place i will have another spinny thing in here because i think those look good let's see if we can actually drive it around without crashing into anything uh, just about missed that post just about missed that post, just about missed that post, and just about missed that post. Fantastic. And here we are, safe and sound, back at the cable car station. Amazing. And speaking of stations, that's exactly what I'm going to do now. We need a station here on this bit of track, and that's going to be our drop-off. So let's just pop that down there. Gondola drop-off, and we'll have another one. Gondola departure. And the idea here is that when this is working as a logging farm, obviously we're going to need power over at the logging station and we're going to have to get lava over there. So this thing's going to be collecting wood from over at the wood farm, bringing it back here, dropping it off at this point here, coming round here and then collecting a bunch of lava and then going off there. But this is all make-believe and I want to believe that people are coming in and riding on these cars and it's working as an actual station. But now we need to go to the other end and put the station there. Logging camp drop-off and yeah, logging camp departure. There's just one more thing we need for this little cable car and there we go we got a brand new conductor who's getting poked quite a lot you in there so when our little train driver gets here and here he is he should stop there open his doors and he'll go around to there pick up the passengers and then he'll be on his merry way and now we've got a little mini station over here it will turn, but there's no power to it yet and I've got a little track coming off here to enable us to build some more of the gondola cars but Gondola cars are not actually gondola cars. They are individual trains, and if I have more than one of them, they're going to crash. 
So we need signals. I've got a little workstation set up over here and I need a bunch of these. And I can make quite a few of them because you get four for every electron tube and train casing. So I'm going to make 16 of them all together. So we basically, when this is here, we don't want another one flying down and crashing into it. So I want one of these signals basically at every single one of these pillars facing in every single direction. So I could end up needing quite a lot of these things. And what this should mean is that when a gondola car comes along, if there's another one in the section between these things, Things, they shouldn't move into it and could then crash into each other. It highlights it on those tracks, but it doesn't highlight it on the monorail, which is never so useful, but I suppose it'll do. And I've already run out and I can't build anymore because I've got no more electron tubes. Oh, jeez. I'm pretty sure there's a way I can speed this up. I'm going to put a deployer there. I'm going to give that some sandpaper. And then I'm just going to chuck all of those on there and see what happens. And there we go. That's loads faster than me doing it. But it, oh, wow, it ran out of sandpaper fast. And there we go. Got a stack of electron tubes now. So I can have a... Oh, wow, I've made way too many train signals. Jeez. And now every single one of our sections of track has a couple of signals on it, which is great. And now all of our track should be separated, which means we can make a whole bunch more of these cable cars. But that's going to take me ages. So we need to learn how to make a schematic cannon. Well, that's an interesting recipe. A dispenser. Oh, really? Oh, my goodness me. All right, got to go home again. Oh, jeez. Bow, logs, iron. And in about a week, we'll have some smooth stone. Gobble, redstone, a dispenser. And now I should be able to make a schematic cannon. I can. I'm also going to need a table, which is more smooth stone and some slabs. And from all the building I've been doing, I've got tons of slabs left over. And now... I believe I need an actual schematic and quill. Or maybe an empty schematic. I'm not... Oh, jeez, which one do I need? So now I need a feather. And feathers are not in my box here. Oh, jeez. Not this again. Eee, chick, 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 chick. Chicken! Give me your feathers. There we go, another feather. Oh, another chicken. Oh, it's chicken land, this place. You've all managed to do it as well. You just like the villagers at the other village. You all just get yourself stuck in a pen. And with these feathers, I can make schematic and quills. So let's do this. Now, there's a couple of minor changes I need to make to these cars. So I guess I need to disassemble it first. Why are you looking at me like that? Jeez. So first things first, I'm going to remove one of the barrels from this and this portable storage interface. And I'm going to put a fluid tank down instead. Then we're going to come over this end here, smash those to bits so I can get down there, and then decide that I actually want those over at the other end so I never needed to smash those bits away in the first place. Now I'll put those back on again, put that barrel down there, and now I can smash these ones away. So now we want a liquid storage interface in there and a portable storage interface in there. Then we can put both of those back on there to cover those up. And then I only need one door on here. Now really, I want to move this seat i want to put this seat over here but i don't know if it's going to allow me to do that because i think it has to be in front of the control so before i actually finish this off i'm just going to see if it'll let me assemble it it will huh okay good oh well, that's good then that gets that seat out of the way and i think that should mean we're good to go and everything should connect and to get this schematic to work i need to select the furthest extents from each side so i've got the whole thing covered and the easiest way to do that is throw down a couple of temporary blocks in each corner and then when i grab the schematic if i select that block there and this one over here like that there we go we got a schematic. I click it, give it a name, and that's saved. And then I believe you're supposed to pop a schematic cannon next to the table. I think it's probably going to need power. You stick a chest down next to that with all the ingredients you needed, it, and then that you put in your schematic. Oh, you need gunpowder to fuel it. Right, oh my goodness me. Gunpowder? Oh, goody, I have three gunpowder. I guess I'll go home. Take the DeLorean. Eh, it's faster going this way in my backpack. Oh, good. I've got 20 gunpowder here. And I'm really hoping it just uses one per build, but I've no idea. Okay, schematic cannon. Here is some gunpowder. I'm just going to put one in so it doesn't waste it. It's now giving me a material checklist. I don't even know what it did. So I need all of these things. Oh, geez, that's a lot of things. Well, I don't just need one. I need loads. Before I get those items, though, I think I've had an idea. I'm pretty sure if I use this schematic and tell it where I want the cable car to go. We'll see, I don't want it there at all. There we go. I think that's the right spot for it. So then when I put it in the schematic cannon, that's going to rotate and look where it needs to go. So that's ready. I just need to get the materials now. Amazing. Okay. Everything should be ticked. It is. Right, let's fire up this cannon and see if it's actually going to work then. So uh, I guess... I just click play, do I? Oh, I thought it was just throwing them on the floor, but it's working. Oh, this is incredible. Wow. And there we go. We have our first train car. All i got to do is colour it in. Amazing. One eternity later. 
So there we go. Now we've got 10 cable cars, all absolutely identical. However, only one of them's got a driver. Now, I could just give him his schedule and get him going. However, I've got a plan. And with that one in there, that answers the age-old question of how many conductors can you stack inside of a cable car? They, they, they seem fine. So now each of our cable cars now is its very own little conductor. They just need schedules. And of course, it's sturdy sheet, isn't it? Oh, jeez. Oh, man. I brought any of that with me. Sturdy sheet. Okay, I've created a whole bunch of schedules that are all exactly the same. All I've got to do is give them to these guys now. So there's one for you, sir. There you go. There's one for you. And he's off already. Oh, jeez. One for you. Oh, no. We've had a collision. Now you're all out of order. I had you all in order now. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. You've got one job. Oh, dear. And I just... What did I... Oh, I just broke... Oh, jeez. I didn't mean to do that. Oops. Here we go. And off he goes. Here we go. They're all going off. They're doing the thing. And hopefully we won't get any crashes. And look how... Oh, my goodness. He looks like a proper one with all of these cable cars going on. This is so exciting. I can't believe it. This is wonderful. I'd like... I know this sounds crazy, but I'd really like them to go slower. I like them to go so much slower, but look how they come in here. They start, this one waits because it's on the same line. And then it goes again and that one comes in. Oh, this is wonderful. And just think one day when I've actually got that logging camp set up, they're actually all going to be actually doing something, fetching stuff and carrying it and bringing it back. Oh, this is great. Okay, a little bit of time has passed since my last edit and I have gone in. Uh, why have I missing glass here? And I'm missing iron, but I've, has a creeper got... Okay, uh, that's probably why. Then I guess we've had a creeper explosion up here. Not ideal. But anyway, yes, I've been round and tidied up the outside of this bit to the best of my ability. However, you might notice the roof is still completely blank. There's no snow on it, but I've got an idea for that. So my little plan is to make a schematic of these roofs. So if I grab that snow block there and come all the way down to here and grab... Whoa. I guess that one there. And then all I got to do is try and line it up with this somehow. So it was basically this corner here. <gasps> of course, it's going to get all the inside as well. Oh, I don't want the inside. Oh, that's not going to work at all. I guess I just got to do it the old fashioned way. Well, that's all the frame blocks in place. I guess it's just time for the snow. And done. Amazing. The roof is in. Must be time for some of those fancy shaders. Didn't it look wonderful? Right, next job, I need to go home and repair my tools because they're a little bit broken from all of that snow shoveling. You should take the DeLorean. No, no, my Jex pack's better, mate. It's quicker, it's more efficient. Why are you bother having a DeLorean then? Oh, I don't know. And here we are back at Hill Valley in all of its beautiful glory. Oh, my Jex pack's run out of fuel now. Oh, jeez. No. And I'm back at the hotel. Oh, jeez. Fine. We will take the DeLorean then. The thing I should have done in the first place and go and get my stuff back. And I suppose we did speed it up, so it should be a lot faster now. And it should be particularly fast going down that big hill. So this could be fun. I'd get out of me DeLorean fly. Jeez. Rude. Let's go. Ready for some crazy speed. This is going to be incredible. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's not my train. This, this is not my bridge. This is not my world. 